this whole legal battle that's been spread across the news. I have had to deal with it from a child's perspective. Whenever you've got black mold, asbestos, and lead-based paint, snakes, a distressing update emerges as Todd Chrisley's desperate cry for help reverberates, shedding light on the stark reality he faces behind bars. The reality TV personality has unveiled the harrowing conditions of his prison experience, sending shockwaves through the industry and beyond. As the weight of this tumultuous chapter takes its toll on him, Todd's ordeal serves as a poignant reminder of the struggles within the criminal justice system. Let's delve into the depths of Todd's heart-wrenching journey where the stark truth of life behind bars comes to light. Todd Chrisley, the real estate tycoon, the start to his own Chrisley Knows Best reality show. Right now, the Chrisley family has been going through a rough patch. Earlier this year, Todd and Julie started their sentence as they were convicted of fraudulent acts and tax evasion charges. U.S. District Judge Eleanor Ross in Atlanta gave Todd a verdict of 12 years in prison, while Julie got seven years behind bars. According to office reports, each of the defendants is required to serve three years of supervised release afterward, and Ross also ordered them to pay restitution in an amount that will be determined later. The jury found that Todd and Julie Chrisley conspired to defraud Georgia community banks to obtain more than $30 million in personal loans. In a recent episode of their podcast, Savannah and Chase Chrisley chose to disclose the troubling specifics surrounding the conditions their parents are enduring during their prison sentences. United in their perspective, both siblings candidly acknowledged that their parents are currently navigating through one of the most challenging chapters of their lives. You got to hear about the cluster of everything going on at his facility. It's a nightmare. The siblings find themselves grappling with heartbreak as they confront the harsh reality of their parents enduring their sentences amidst scorching heat, devoid of any relief from air conditioning. The geographical locations of their respective incarcerations add an additional layer of concern. Now they're both now they both have no air. Yeah, so no air conditioning. They both live in states or they're both in states where it gets 100 plus degrees and yeah. there's no air conditioning. Adding to the distress, Savannah revealed that Julie has been confronted with the terrifying presence of poisonous snakes slithering around her sleeping quarters, an alarming situation that potentially puts her life at grave risk. And mom has rattlesnakes just casually slithering on the floor in front of her. They weren't rattlesnakes. They weren't, no. They were, um, they were poisonous. Adding to the dire situation, Savannah disclosed that the overall conditions of the facility have become uninhabitable, plagued by the rampant presence of various fungi. Air conditioning is the least of it. Whenever you've got black mold, asbestos, and lead-based paint, snakes. While the siblings are fully aware of their parents' incarceration, they candidly express how heart-wrenching it is to witness their parents navigate these challenging conditions all by themselves. It is prison, so we're not going to sit here and act like it should be the Four Seasons because well, it I shouldn't. know that. I know that, but at the end of the day, it's it's my parents. The siblings also bring forth a crucial observation that the lack of empathy from others stems from the fact that it's not their own loved ones who are facing the challenges of incarceration. It's prison, so that's people don't have any sympathy for it. Yeah, no, I get and that. And so people don't want them. Well, they being don't have housed. any sympathy until they're in this situation exactly. with their loved one. In a startling disclosure, Savannah hinted that her parents have endured heat strokes and required urgent hospital care. Despite these alarming incidents, the facilities in question have seemingly taken no action to address the situation. Your loved one sitting there, literally having a heat stroke and ending up in a hospital or not being fed properly. Jay Surgent, a partner at Weiner Law Group LLP who specializes in white collar crime, exclusively told People Magazine that the living conditions are inhumane for both of the defendants. Their living conditions, both of them, he in Pensacola, she in Lexington, Kentucky, it's an absolutely ridiculous situation. Not that we're saying that they deserve special treatment because they're celebrities. They don't. What we're saying is that they, along with other inmates, deserve better treatment. We shouldn't be treating our prisoners the way we're treating our prisoners at this point in time. To add to that, he also expands on what steps they would potentially take during the couple's ongoing appeals process. 
the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals can reverse the district court or they could remand the case back for hearings that should have been held that were not held during the course of this trial. We argued very vigorously that their constitutional rights have been violated and that they basically were not given a fair hearing. It's all in black and white, actually. Alex Little, Julie's lawyer, has brought to light a disconcerting revelation. He has unveiled that significant issues within the case exist, yet the judicial system has turned a blind eye to these concerns. I mean, there were some real problems with the way this case happened at trial, with what was done to your parents, with the sort of evidence that was admitted, the way the judge handled things. To add to that, Savannah officially confirmed their family's engagement with a new legal representative. She shared a determined stance, emphasizing the family's unwavering commitment to the cause, stating that they're leaving no stone unturned in their efforts to get a robust appeal. I don't care if I have to take this to the Supreme Court, there is no quitting that's happening. We have a great team of people behind us that I'm so blessed and grateful for. Savannah enjoys unwavering support from her dedicated fan base, standing firmly behind her in this challenging time. They believe the judicial system has wronged her parents in more ways than one. Keep using your platforms to raise awareness of all the corruption in this case and how your parents have been unjustly prosecuted. Bring it Biden, bring it to the governors, the senators of your state, and those who can help overturn these biased convictions. We're all behind you guys. To God be the glory. In the wake of all the drama, Savannah has come clean about the effects the ordeal had on her mental health. She explained that her podcast is actually the only thing that has made it possible for her to bear the burden of harsh reality. That's where my podcast comes into play is it's okay to not be okay. And that's kind of the place that I'm at right now is just using my podcast as an outlet to be vulnerable. You might not believe that Chrisley was convicted due to the surprising testimony of Mark Braddock. He divulged a breathtaking betrayal, admitting that he not only bore witness to the Chrisley's alleged crimes, but also played an active role in their commission. What adds an extra layer of complication to this revelation is the previously undisclosed fact that Mark and the Chrisleys were allegedly ex-lovers. Braddock, who was granted immunity in return for testifying, he and Chrisley continued working together for a decade after their secret affair ended, with the businessman describing their close relationship as a brotherhood. However, that brotherhood blew up in Chrisley's face in 2012 when he reportedly threw Braddock out of his office and threatened to call the police on him. As you can imagine, Braddock then turned the Chrisleys into the FBI for tax fraud. In addition to all this drama, Savannah revealed aspects of the facility's behavior with her parents. She explained that the director of BOP has been making visits to the facilities of her parents, but the problem is that they are not unannounced visits. The director of the BOP going around and doing visits to these facilities, but the facilities are notified. The facilities get the time to cover up before the director arrives and consequently, their actions do not come to light. The facilities basically hide the problems instead of solving them. These facilities now have time to go and hide everything they yeah, need not, hidden. Not fix the problem, no. just temporarily hide it yeah. so no one sees it. Nevertheless, the Chrisleys hold on to hope for the future. They remain optimistic that in due time, the truth will come to light, revealing the full story, and they will ultimately find themselves vindicated. But that's the thing, and that's why I have faith that it's all gonna come to light because they are not fixing it. They're temporarily yeah. hiding it. However, in a surprising twist, Chase has fearlessly pointed his fingers directly at the government. The siblings share a collective belief that their family has fallen victim to a larger scheme of organized crime, and at the heart of it, all is the government itself. That's the biggest organized crime that I've ever seen is, our, is the government. Well, and, yeah. and, the, and owning and operating places like this to where it's making money for them Todd's attorney explained that Todd holds the belief that his celebrity status has led to some unusual incidents during his time at FPC Pensacola in Florida. Todd himself has also given a take on his experiences in confinement. In a conversation with TMZ, Todd revealed his suspicion that someone might have taken a photograph of him while he was sleeping. Additionally, he alleges that he hasn't been receiving any mail and suspects that it's being purposely destroyed. Despite these puzzling occurrences, Todd remains unsure about the motive behind these actions. But overall, the Chrisley siblings explain that their parents are doing the best they can in the conditions provided to them. They believe that these ordeals are not enough to break their spirit. Our parents, they're 
they're very very strong individuals well, yeah, and they because... were not they were not built to break and this damn sure is not going to break them the Chrisley family remains unwavering in their conviction that they will secure a retrial for their federal tax fraud case, despite their current combined 19-year prison sentence. In an interview, Little explained the reasons for the family's renewed optimism and discussed the legal strategy they will pursue. Throughout their legal battle, they have asserted their innocence against allegations of wrongdoing. Little claims, the very beginning of this case, there was an unconstitutional search by the Georgia Department of Revenue. This court already found that was unconstitutional and it should have stopped the whole case in its tracks. That didn't happen. And that's certainly one of the things we're pursuing on the appeal. The second piece is one of the IRS officers testified about whether the Chrysler's had paid certain taxes. That certainly we think affected the jury and we believe it will be the basis for a new trial. That's it for today, folks. Until next time, goodbye.